handouts here? Everybody got them? So if you need handouts, I have them what? over here. What? And, um... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh. I know what to do with it. Um, you will have here some uh, local resources of people who, that I know, that I've worked with. There are many, many more, and maybe you have met some here who can do hydrotherapy, and um, I just put um, names, addresses, and emails, phone numbers, so you can contact them. Uh, my name is Magda Chokesan. Um, I'm a massage therapist and a wellness coach in Bonners Ferry. Um, I also have a background in public health, and so I love chronic disease prevention and health promotion. Uh, there are uh, some books here that I recommend that you get, and some of them are uh, Hydrotherapy by Dr. Charles Thomas and Clarence Dale. And Wildwood has these two um, magazines. They might still be in print. I bought them a couple of years ago, three, four years ago, and that have uh, the fomentations and other articles that can help with. So Gwen has asked me to talk about uh, hydrotherapy as it pertains to uh, pulmonary diseases, pulmonary illnesses, and so I will concentrate on that because there's so much to do with hydrotherapy. So how many of you here, now that I've done that, have ever had hydrotherapy done on you or done it? Okay, very good. And what does hydrotherapy stand for? Water treatment. Water treatments. And I call this, I decided to not use a PowerPoint because they told me it was, the rooms were so small and I wanted to give more room, but uh, we'll do a lot of demos. And I called my presentation hydrothermal therapy. And so what would that mean? So, yes, so uh, we have like hot water, cold water, and so it has to do with uh, temperatures. So temperature of water um, is also important. Okay, how many of you have heard of the Spanish flu? Okay, so everybody by now, if I would have asked you five years ago, nobody would have, but now we all have heard of the Spanish flu because it was an influenza A uh, flu back in 1918. And this past year, we've had kind of an influenza A upsurge, if you will, uh, with the, after, after COVID. And so this can help with uh, any pulmonary ailments from asthma to COVID, influenza, you name it. Uh, pneumonia, if someone has pneumonia, um, some of the things that we are covering here will help. But do you have any idea during the Spanish flu, uh, what was the number one treatment that helped people? Hydrotherapy. Hydrotherapy. And more specifically, it was fomentations or revulsive um, treatments, and um, we will we'll talk about that. In the general hospitals in 1918, 1919, the mortality rate was between 13 to 40 percent. So one sixth of the world's population died. 50 million people at that time. That's a lot of people. Um, in the military hospitals, only 6.7 died. And that may have to do because all the personnel was actually called into the military, etc. cetera. And in, there were certain lifestyle centers called sanitaria that were, uh, where mortality rate was only 1.3%. And there were some institutions, it included lifestyle centers, and it included some schools where the mortality rate was zero. Would you like to learn how to save lives like that? Yeah. So we're going to learn right here uh, what helped them to be successful, both in the lifestyle centers as well as in the, some of these institutions. Um, so what are the advantages of hydrotherapy? You can do them in the, com in the convenience of your own home. You can do them uh, on a very low budget. You don't need anything. 
there are no side effects. If you understand a few simple things, there will be no side effects. You won't burn anybody or anything. If, you're act if you just use common sense, you don't have anything to worry about. Um, the treatment is very specific. It's specific to particular body parts. It, it can help with systemic diseases. It can help with uh, just being on a specific area of the body. It doesn't add burden to the liver, you know, like uh, drugs might. And uh, uh, it's inexpensive. I want you to write down on your notes there somewhere, whether you're taking notes on something else. There are handouts here. If you come in late, um, there are some handouts you want to hand with some of that. You want to make sure you get a handout. Okay. Okay. So there are three things I want you to write down on your note. Three words that you can remember. When you do hydrotherapy or when you do any natural remedy. Three words. These are the words. Perseverance, frequency, and cooperation. You want to persevere in your treatments. You can't do one treatment and forget about it. So persevere. Frequency, you don't want to do one today and one a week from now, okay? In cooperation, you're cooperating with, with God, you're cooperating with your body. In other words, if you have a fever, you're not gonna take a Tylenol because you're not cooperating with your body, you're shutting down your body. And so you want to help your body with that fever because why do you have a fever? To fight disease. So the immune system is uh, grabbed up, and it's heated up, and it's fighting <coughs> disease. And so that's why you have a fever. Well, you don't want it to get out of hand, but you don't want to shut it down right in the middle of fighting disease. So that's what I mean by cooperation. What do I mean by frequency? Well, hydrotherapy, you should do, let's say, if you have a pulmonary illness, you should do a fomentation treatment, maybe three in two days, three, four in two days. So you want to do at least one a day. At, uh, two a day would be great. Remember, four hours apart is an okay number for the body to have time to, uh, an okay timeline for the body to have time to uh, recuperate and fight. What is the physiology? What happens in your body when you do hydrotherapy? We talked about hydrothermal therapy. So therapy with water and using heat and cold, um, using different temperatures of water. What happens? You have vasoconstriction and vasodilations of the vessels, okay? So your blood vessels constrict and dilate. Constrict and dilate. What does it sound like? It sounds like a pump. <laughs> so you're creating a peripheral pump. And that peripheral pump is um, helping circulation. And your circulation is made up of blood and what else? Lymph. That's right. So you have two parallel systems, the blood circulation and the lymphatic circulation. Now blood has a pump already. What is it? The heart. The heart. Does lymph have a pump? Yes, pump legs. Your legs, thank you, Steve. <laughs> your greatest pump right here. Your calf muscles. Lymphatic system does not have a pump, but it has your muscles. So the activation of the activity of your muscles will help the lymph move along. And so that's why when we're not when we're laying in bed or sick or whatever, or, or, or sitting in the behind the desk for many hours. Your lymph gets stagnated, gets backed up. So you want to be moving. And that moves because the greatest concentration of lymph nodes are in your groin area, armpits. So you go like this, guess what? Moving. You're gonna move your lymph. It is the easiest exercise. Walking. Okay. Um, one, so right now, by the way, let me just say this. Um, do you see the two asterisks? Okay, mm -hmm. access to hydro workshop handouts. 
everything that I'm talking about and more is going to be at this website. I've given this presentation in Sandpoint and um, you can go to this website and find all the handouts so you don't need to take copious amount of, of notes but just kind of some key things when I'm mentioning it. Okay? And so contraindications for hydrotherapy um, if we're doing, for example, on the feet, let's say we're doing hydrotherapy on the feet, like a hot foot bath, or a contrast foot bath, what do you think would be a, a contraindication? That open sore or diabetic? Diabetic. Open sores? No. That is the well, indication. With diabetic. The, the indication for open sores is hydrotherapy. Because it helps the immune system to bring uh, yeah. healing, okay? So hot and cold uh, to an open wound, as long as, you know, considering, considering the wound, considering the situation, but it's an indication. So but a contraindication, so a contraindication would be diabetes. Very good. Or neuropathy. And why would that be? So yeah. the, the yeah. body is helping uh, the blood move very fast. Mm -hmm. And if you have neuropathy, you cannot move it very fast. So you'll create damage. So you want to, what do you do in that case? You, are, you don't use such great contrast, mm -hmm. okay? The contrast will be uh, smaller. So you don't use very hot or very cold. You use a, a, a lighter contrast in between the hot and the cold, okay? This is something I would like you to remember. It's a quote by Hippocrates. It is more important to know what sort of person has a disease than to know what sort of disease a person has. I'm going to tell you about some therapies that will help with different diseases. It doesn't matter what, a, what disease a person has. It doesn't matter what I tell you for those diseases if you don't know what kind of person has that disease. If you have a, ch a small, very small child, if you have a very uh, sick person, very feeble, elderly person who has different conditions, that's why you want to take a history of a person that you are helping, okay? So it matters, more importantly, what sort of person has a disease than it matters what kind of disease a person has. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, because you want to work with to help that person not to hinder their healing in any other way. Okay, so we're gonna get right on to it. There is one seat and I want it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to help you uh, walk through some demonstrations here. On that website you will also see a couple of videos. I did uh, December 2001, I did a video, uh, a whole three hours. So she wanted me to do a three hour workshop in 45 minutes, so we're gonna do it. <laughs> um, and December 22, I did another one. I had a, a, a panel discussion with some other professionals that helped with this, and so you can have a more in-depth uh, explanation, as well as links to, you were talking earlier about where can I find these online? Well, I have links where you go to the Natural Remedies tab, and um, there are links to the videos by other professionals and other hydrotherapists. Stuff. So, how many of you have ever done steam inhalation? Okay, you get like stuffy nose, stuffy throat, you know, um, you do a steam inhalation. This is how we do it. So you get a, a kettle of water, you bring the water, some water to boil, and then you take a, take a spoon, uh, a teaspoon or a table, I put a tablespoon of salt, like sea salt, Celtic salt. You put it in your kettle, you take it off the, um, off the burner, you put, you know, you can put something here. You go to a table, and you're going to get your Kleenex, and you're going to get your, uh, your towel, 
You're going to get some eucalyptus and put five drops. You can put peppermint if you want. And that kind of opens up your uh, respiratory system there. You get your towel. And you, when you put the, when you put the eucalyptus or the peppermint, cover it for two, three, four seconds, and then uncover it. Do not breathe when you uncover it. Let, just let it pass for about one or two seconds because you don't want to burn. Yeah. Okay. So let it air out for one second, then. You cover everything up, okay? So you, you cover it and you sit there 10, 15, 20 minutes. I have my spoon. I stir it when it gets, you know, when I don't have, when I don't feel the steam coming, stir it up. And uh, then go to bed. Rest. After every treatment, rest. That's when your body heals. How long do you rest for? Well, with a hydrotherapy treatment like a hot bath or a contrast shower or fomentations, 30 minutes would be great. But 15 to 30 minutes, you, it's important to rest so the body can heal. And how long have you got your face over the steam? As long as you got steam going. Probably okay. 15, 20 minutes. All right. But as far as covering it, once you put the oil in before? Just a few seconds. Okay. Yeah. 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 And then just right. take it off. And yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. You see, these are old towels. I, no, anymore, I don't throw away old towels. I don't throw away old pajamas. Because <laughs> this is what we're doing next. Um, I have a collar from an old pajama, so flannel, cotton, wool. I don't throw them out. <laughs> I put them in a, in a closet that is for hydrotherapy and, and natural remedies. Getting cold out there. Okay. And um, so. Have you ever had a sore throat? Any of you singers? Any of you speakers? Um, you want to get well, right? So you get a sore throat coming on. You can get, you can take a shower, and we'll talk about that. Um, and then, so before a cold application, before most cold applications we're going to talk about, it's good to do a hot application. Okay. Get an old, a little, you know, flannel piece, whether it's from a pajama or whatnot. Put it around your neck. So and see if it covers. So, okay. So if it covers up, then it's good. Okay. What I'm gonna do with this is put it in a one-to-one -one solution of water and vinegar. Okay. Um, actually, no. Just. I'm sorry, that's, a, that's for a different one. Just pl plain water, okay? For the heating compress, just plain water. Cold water, okay? Because what happens? You, you have an infection. You want the body to uh, be summoned to come to that infection site and say, I want to work here. So you're going to put cold, cold compress. You ring it up. Yeah. A cold compress and... Put plastic. Get a piece of plastic. I do have a pin here, but I'm not going to take the time. Right. But you understand. You have it. You pin it. Put plastic, and it would be nice to have a <laughs> demonstration. <laughs> I can do it on somebody. Uh, <laughs> you said you put cold on your. Cold. Doesn't the cold push the blood away? No. Um, it, your body will heat this up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I put it here. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's good. So I pin this, okay? Then mm -hmm. I put the plastic to keep that heat in. When the cold, yes, if the, for a few seconds the cold will push it away. But after that, the body will want to act on it. This is wool. And you put another uh, pin on it, you pin it, and you go to bed. And within the first hour, thank you, 
Within the first hour, you want to put your finger in, and if it's getting hot, then the treatment's working. If it's not getting hot, then you're not really, uh, your body's not able to do it, so it doesn't work for you. It may work for someone else. If you have a child, you do it for them to see if it's getting hot, okay? By, by the morning, so let's say you do it overnight, by the morning, it will have been dry if, it, if the treatment works for you, okay? But you want to make sure that you're able to do that. There are two seats right here. <laughs> I got a question. Thank you. Yes. Uh, what about doing your whole body like in a. I got oh, a wet sheet rack? Yeah. Yes. I'm not covering that because I don't have a lot of time, but I can just quickly say that. We do have, I have some videos online with that, uh, myself and other people. So, and there are some handouts if you. If you need. Okay? So, a wet sheet wrap, he was asking, how about cover your whole body with a, a cold wet sheet wrap? So, after you've done a, a hot treatment, a bath, or whatnot, you can do a cold sheet, cold wet sheet wrap. When would you do that? You would do that if you have a fever or, um, or, or a Ill, you know, trying to get over an uh, illness. Um, and your body will help you with that fever, it will help fight it. Another time would be for detox, uh, like um, when you go into withdrawal from uh, tobacco, tobacco withdrawal or drug withdrawal or whatever. Or alcohol. Or alcohol, okay. yeah. Um, and so, but tobacco especially. And your sheets will get yellow. Mm. So use very old sheets. <laughs> Um, and do use a um, like a, um, a plastic, protector. you know, plastic protector. Yes. Okay, like a, a sharker. Okay, so a wet sheet wrap, and we do have on the handouts how to wrap so that no body, no part of the body touches another part of the body. So mm -hmm. there's a way to wrap. Okay, and I won't take the time, but okay. Um, good question. Anything else? I do have a few more to go through. Okay. My favorite, vinegar socks. Socks? This is where, vinegar socks. This is where we get the one-to-one -one vinegar water, cold uh, vinegar, cold water um, dilution. And so you get that. You don't need a lot, like a half a cup. You know, it's plenty. Just to, just to soak your socks, I recommend cotton and I recommend a neutral color, just in case. You, know, you don't want bleeding, and if it's from China, it will bleed. Um, so you soak them and you squeeze them out really well. But you don't, you don't, you don't want them to be like dry, right? You still want them to be a little cool and damp. Then you get. When I go to the grocery store, I get these, a couple extra <laughs> bags, like clean bags, that, so then I can do things like these, or put a loaf of bread or something in a clean bag. And uh, so you want some clean plastic bags to put over your uh, wet vinegar sock, and then you put a wool sock, and what do you do after that? <laughs> rest, that's right. So you rest. And in the morning, you, uh, you know, you will be fever free. You do this for fever. Now, I should qualify that. You don't want to leave them on more than like four hours because your feet will get really wrinkly and you can't walk. <laughs> I did it. Oh, I did it. <laughs> um, so we have a high fever, you don't know what to do, you don't want to take the Tylenol, and you do the vinegar socks. I love vinegar sock therapy. Does it matter if it's white, white uh, or Doesn't apple matter. vinegar or anything? Yeah. But I just use white distilled vinegar. Could you explain quickly what the vinegar does? It's like versus if you didn't use vinegar? Yeah, no, it, it actually kind of draws, you know. I see. So, yeah, you, 
You don't want to do, you don't want to just do cold water. No, you want to do the vinegar. That is another, so that is either another therapy or an additional therapy. Mm -hmm. You can do it at the same time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's a good one. But we're doing hydrotherapy, so I, she wanted me to stick <laughs> to hydrotherapy. <laughs> Thank you. Now, my favorite, I want to do this to make sure that we have enough time. There are a couple more that I can cover, but I want to do fomentations or general revulsive or hot packs or heating packs. They have different different names. I like to call them fomentations. Okay, for fomentations you need, it's wonderful to have a massage table like you have here. You can do it on a bed, no problem. I've done it on people, they were sick, I went to their home um, and I did it on their bed. We put like a plastic underneath, uh, under your sheets, put a plastic and then put the sheets on top because you don't want a person to be on the plastic, right? Um, whether it's a, uh, a shower curtain or something like that. I love this one. You can be out in the mission field where they have nothing and you can do fomentations. You can do this, be in someone's apartment who only has a microwave and you can do fomentations. You can be out in the country, off the grid, and you can do fomentations. What are the different ways? You can use a hydroculator. Has anybody seen a hydroculator? Mm -hmm. Okay, so a hydroculator, you can uh, Google that, is a machine that uh, you plug in and it heats water and you get these uh, sand, uh, sand packs that are sewn by different companies and you put them in these slots, these hydroculator slots, and it heats them up, and you can do that for days on end. They can be there as long as it doesn't get too low, and as long as it, you know, if it gets too low and it gets dry and damp, then it gets moldy. But as, if it doesn't, it can be weeks and weeks. You know, if you have a wellness center and you do that all the time and you keep an eye on it, you can use a hydroculator. You don't have one, you don't have the money, you can use a microwave, uh, and I'll explain how to do that. You can use um, a large Instapot or a large slow cooker. Um, you can use a bath canner, like for your canning, you know, the, yeah, so a bath canner because it has a, uh, the rack. Yeah, the rack on the bottom. So what we're looking at is steamers. You want something that's a steamer, okay, or a microwave in that case. So what hap What do you do? Well, you can use, like I said, you can do it with anybody, anywhere. Traditionally, you use uh, fomentation packs. <coughs> These are the fomentation <coughs> packs. They used to sell them, some you can still find them, some are, you know, don't make them anymore. But, and some people on the videos that I showed you will teach you how to make them. I won't take the time right now, but you can make your own fermentation packs. You can use wool, and these are sewn, you know, for that. An old army blanket cut up in four, and you can put your fermentation pack here, cover it. This is the traditional fermentation pack. Before I had, these were given to me, I was so grateful. Before I had these, I just had towels. But you will use a lot of towels. Uh, just, just know that and, and plan for that. And you will, so you will use, let's say, four, you need four fermentation packs or four towels, okay? because you will do three treatments. But why do you need four? Well, you're bilateral, <laughs> right? And you have a front and a back. So I would like a, a small volunteer. <laughs> would you like to help me, please? Thank you. Let's show them how to do it. What's your name? Gloria. Gloria? Magda. Good to meet you. 
Would you sit here? This is a massage table. So you all are going to have the person sit in the middle. Do you mind taking your hands off? And um, I'm going to have you lay here. Okay? Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay, so Gloria has pneumonia or she has the flu. We don't want it to get advanced, we want to catch it right away. And she's already been coughing. So I want to start a fomentation treatment on her. We're going to put her feet in hot water. Okay? Lift up your feet and bend your feet, bend your knees rather. So we have hot water here. Of course, before you do that, you want to test it, you, you know, yeah. you know all that, okay? And you see that I have plastic because it kind of, it's going to get, you want, um, some people say a bucket, you, not for this, a bucket is too high, but you want a high enough container, not the shallow bins or whatever. So you want something high because what? We're going to cover her. You don't want it to fall in there. What I've done is I put a big old towel so that I don't get the sheets wet in case that happens. But let's hope it doesn't, right? So, we got <coughs> um, so I, I only covered that because I want to get it out of the way. But before you do that, you want to do the, the back. So can you sit? There you go. Thank you. We're going to have a fomentation pack. So she's small. You do not want to burn them in the, uh, on the hip or sacral area or anything. It will happen. So, okay. So because she's small, right? But if it was someone else, you, ju you just eye it and see how you're going to do it. So we're going to do it like this for her. And so she'll be more comfortable. I'll do it like this. All right. Now. You can um, put another towel if it gets hot. So let's try it like this and see. Go ahead. The person should have no clothes on. So you want, if you have a, a woman, you want a woman doing it. If you have a, a man, it doesn't matter. But, um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> So that's a traditional fermentation. Let's say I didn't have fermentation packs. I can use towels. I would put a, uh, a towel on the bottom to absorb, you know, the, the wet towel that I'm going to put on. Then I'll put my pack, my hot pack, which would, so I'm just going to demonstrate, okay? And so this will be for the back. It's going to stay there. They're going to stay on there for the duration of the treatments. You do not change that. Okay? So that so, the front so the bottom, the bottom mm -hmm. is just, it stays exactly how yes. it is. It's not wet at all. It's just it's wet. wet. Well, you've already yeah. got it we're wet. Do, yes. Okay. We're doing dry run, but it's wet. Okay, that's <laughs> what I wanted to make And sure. hot. Uh -huh. And you might need mittens to handle it. Mm. What happens if it gets too hot for the person? Oh, we'll talk about okay. it. <laughs> yeah, very important, very good question. So I just want to explain, I will put several layers, about three towels, in between them and the fomentation on, when they're laying on their back, okay? So it depends on how thick your towels are and how you fold them, you know. I use about three towels, just say, right? And, but she's good right now, so that would be the, the towel, uh, the towel method. But we're doing the fermentation method, and that's good. Now with, uh, I, I do want to, like, I want to save the wool, right? I don't want to wash it, so I do want to put a towel, I'm sorry, a towel on top of it, so that don't, we don't soil it, right? So I would do that. Now, I'll show you the towel method for the top because it, it uh, will give you an idea. So I have a fermentation mm -hmm. that I 
let's say I uh, got it in a uh, steamer, whatever steaming container I'm going to use. So it will be rolled up. Or I got it from the microwave. So I have a, uh, you know, I have a container. I'll have a bowl or a container and uh, bring it up. And I'm going to get ready to put it on the person. So what do I do? I make sure that I layer. So you do it this way. You do it lengthwise. Okay? So you put a dry towel, another dry towel. I have four layers here. And uh, that should be enough. Okay? Now I want to uh, put this fomentation in another towel because we're doing the towel method. If I was doing the, the, uh, the pack method, the fomentations that are already sewn and everything, I don't need to do this. I would put it in the wool blanket. But I'm trying to save my heat. Right? So I bring it here. There we go. And I put it on them. and you cover them up three minutes so they're going to be on there for three minutes if you are doing the microwave that's easy <laughs> when you put one in you know you have three minutes and then you take it out for the back you use five minutes five minutes for the back you want that hot so your question was it, it, this is why we're doing this this is exactly why you're doing this because you want to listen to your patient. If they say, I'm hot, that means the steam is coming out and it's touching their skin and they're hot. And so you want to quickly uh, grab a, a clean dry towel and a clean rag, dry rag, and lift this up, wipe them off, and put another towel, another layer of towel. So very important, I had a friend and she burned her dad's uh, hips and it took a long time to heal. And she said, I don't want to ever do it again. I said, no, don't lose faith. Just do it. But um, just listen, you know, make sure that uh, that you are are listening to that if they say that they're hot. So they're, because they're burned. So that's the only thing that I want you to like really be careful about. And that's why it's important to, to do this. Thank you, Gloria. Um, then three minutes have, so, you know, they're going to be in here, and they're going to have their knees bent. <laughs> and um, in after, it's not exact, it's a science, but it not, it's not exact. So if it's three minutes or five minutes, it's okay. And you go and take another fermentation, and you change it out. If you're doing the microwave, you only need three. I mean, you, you only need three total because you have one on the back and you use the first one for your last one and so you're good, okay? But if you're using a steamer, you it takes a long time to steam. And so these, I did mention that these were wet, right? Mm -hmm. They were wet and you put them in there um, wet but, you know, drained. They're not dripping, okay? So after the first or second uh, treatment, they're gonna be hot, like, like their whole body, not like they're burning, but their whole body is warm, and you want to make sure that you hydrate them, so you give them some water. Um, you wanna check the feet, and uh, you wanna check the water, you check the water, oh, it's kinda cooling down. You lift their feet up, or you put them aside. She's already getting warm here. <laughs> you, and, and you pour a little bit of hot water. You make sure there's a barrier. Your hand or their feet are out and you don't burn them. You put some hot water and they continue like that. The back, the fomentation on the back stays there for the whole duration, okay? And then you do your last treatment and you're done. And you do that twice a day, two, three days. And you'd be amazed what happens. I would like to go ahead. We used to do something similar to this, but we do an ice rub between the fomentations. Is that yes? 
So uh, that's, thank you, and that's what I was going to cover right now. Thank you very much. Um, so in between, you make sure that you have an ice, uh, you know, a bowl with ice, water, or whatnot, a, um, a, a, a wet rag, okay? So you take these off, and you clean them, real, I mean, you like rub them really well with this cold mitten or cold uh, rag, and then you put the next fermentation on. Okay, so it's not really a hot and cold. It's really a, it's called a hot pack, but a heating pack, a hot pack. So I don't use the one that I just had the fermentation in, right? The one that I just had the fermentation in. I don't use that towel. I use another towel. That's why you need a lot of towels. But the others, if they're not wet, use them. If they're wet, do not use them, right? Because you don't want to burn them. And then at the end, I have two of these with my cold um, ice, ice bath here. And I wrap them really well. I have her take her hand out. And I okay, lift your hand. And I rub really well. And I rub it really well. And then I have them sleep. Of course, you do the back and, and everything. You don't want to forget that. And then I have them put on some pajamas and go to bed. <laughs> Thank you, Gloria. What a sweetheart, you brave girl. Yes. Mm -hmm. So how many times do you? So um, I'll tell you a, a little story. I had a friend who had COVID, and she was a, a nurse practitioner. She was a provider. She worked four days a week, three days off. Four days a week, three days off. She got sick during the weekend, then she was fine. She'd go to work. Then she got sick again during the weekend, and she was fine. And she took a test. She didn't have COVID. She had no antibodies for COVID. Okay. I said, you have COVID. Yeah, I know I have COVID, but uh, I don't know. I'm fine. I'm fine. I said, you're not fine. <laughs> five weeks. Five weeks. I said, this is enough. Enough of this. And this was in 2021, and right before Christmas. So on a Sunday, I went to her house. I said, I'm doing fermentations on you. She was going to Atlanta to visit family on Wednesday. I said, I'm doing fermentations on you. And she put on fine. I'm getting better. No, you're not. And so I did fermentations on her. Monday, I said, I want to come back. No, 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 I'm fine. I'm feeling great. I said, no, I want to do fermentation on you again. I didn't do it. She wouldn't let me because we didn't live in the same town anyway, so I had to travel. And on Tuesday, I did another set of fermentations. I said, I am coming. I did another set of fermentations on her. She travels to Atlanta on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. She's sick, like in bed. She can't move. And she goes and does a uh, COVID test. It's positive. What do you think happened? Well, it was hiding from the immune system. And she, the immune system was not able to make antibodies and wasn't able to fight it. But the fomentations brought it up to the cell, these you know antigens, so that the cells can see, I have an intruder here, I want to fight. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's what happened. Now you may say, well, that's horrible, she got sick. Mm -hmm. No, her immune system was able to fight, and sh then she was fine. and. You know, had immunity now. Mm. Uh, I had the same exact thing happen a year before COVID. Same exact thing. I was coughing for five weeks, and I didn't. I wasn't sick. I was just coughing. That's it. I did steam inhalation only once. I did not take my own advice. I didn't persevere. I should have done it two, three times, and I would have dislodged because I felt something dislodge from my lungs. And but I only did it once. I still had something in there. <laughs> just like this that's it for five weeks and I called up a friend and I, I started getting chest pain and I didn't know what was wrong and I called all my nurse and doctor friends that I know and they said uh, go to the ER and one of them said do fomentations so I called up a, a friend of mine I did fomentations one day I did them again the second day 
and she did a lemon soda soak again as well with the fermentation. So two treatments. And one day I went to bed, but I couldn't. I was had pain and just I. So I, I called, like I said, all my friends. They said go to the ER. So I went to the ER, and the doctor said, "There's nothing wrong with you." <laughs> There's, I have, there, I can't see anything in your lungs. You don't have pneumonia. I don't have anything. I said, I have something. <laughs> so he gave me a shot. I felt better. Sent me home. I had costochondritis, so pain between, uh, inflammation between the uh, intercost, you know, between your ribs from all the coffee. But she did the fomentations on me two days in a row. And that night, I came from, from the ER, came, came home from the ER, and I was sick for several days. Oh. Because it was something there, it was hiding from the immune system, and the immune system couldn't work on it. But the fomentations brought it, you know, brought you that circulation. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> brought that circulation um, and was able to fight. So it, it works. It can be life-saving, and uh, like I said, in those lifestyle centers where uh, they where they have no deaths in doing the Spanish flu, and also during COVID and other other things. So you want to persevere, you want to be frequent, and you want to cooperate with your body. Um, there are more remedies. Uh, if you didn't get a handout, please make sure you do. And um, let me have Linda do her little help nugget. And if you have questions and we have time, I can answer them at the end. Yes. Linda? Thank you. Sure. That would be a good source. This will be fun. I'll be right back. Concepts. I have it on here. I have videos and those books, the hydrotherapy books. Gwen, so if you if you would like this book, Gwen ordered it, but it's in the mail. So please sign up your name, and she will get you a book when when it comes. Who do we sign up with? Gwen Shorter. How much do I don't know what don't know what okay. she has it for. Whoops. These are pass out. <laughs> and these are to go around. She's the one that coordinates. Gwen, she has the homework publishing. And this also. Thank you. And she's right here on the, the last one. Oh no, I didn't put her on because she already has all her stuff on everything. So, so that I can just pass it on. We used to do this when our kids were growing up, and it works for us. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. Don't run me over just because I'm little. <laughs> Hand up. She's got Hand up. No, hers. Well, good afternoon. Have you enjoyed being here? Yes. Have you learned things that you can take home and use in your own home? Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Yeah. Well, I have something that maybe you have not heard before, and I would like to at least show you. Can everybody see this board? It says Artemisia onia. It's a sweet wormwood and sweet annie. How many have heard of one or two or three of these things? Only okay, some of you have. Very good. Okay, good. How many of you have heard of wormwood? Okay. Some people understand that wormwood is not sweet wormwood. And there is a difference. And I want to make this very clear before I start. When you take wormwood, it actually is a poison that is used in alcohol. And it's been used years ago. It is in the Bible. It is very, very bitter. It's not very sweet, and you cannot use it very long. Artemisia, you can use for a long time. Now, I want to give you a little bit of information about Artemisia. Because Artemisia is so important for us. 
And we in America have not yet discovered the real Artemisia. Okay, let me give you just a little bit of uh, historical background about it. Number one, it won a Nobel Prize in 2015 by a Chinese doctor. She's a lady that designed and had Artemisia for those that had malaria. Millions of people were dying from malaria and she put this together for the people that were having malaria and it became so famous that she had a Nobel Prize given to her for helping humanity. Now you might want to know, well where does this come from, right? Well some of us would like to. It has been known clear back in the Chinese dynasty in the 200 BC where it started and there are different countries that have had Artemisia for a long time and let me name just a couple. It's grown in China of course, Africa, Central, Eastern, Europe, Asia, India, the temperate zones of America, Australia, and tropical regions. Now you're going to ask yourself, well we're not a tropical region up here and it says it only grows in a tropical region, right? No, it doesn't because it does grow in your home and when you get it grown in your home, guess where you can put it when it's warm? Outside. And I'm going to explain that to you. I actually have handouts going out that you will be able to go on the internet and see how it is grown from the very start to the very finish of everything of it. And also, I'd like to say, it's great news about this plant because you know what? Having the Nobel Prize, it became a star plant is born. I tell you that the researchers and the scientists, oh, yeah. investigators of health fields and natural health, you know what they did? They took this little plant part from the top to the leaves to the little flower down all the way down to the root. And you know, they're, they're, um, they had discovered and analyzed that this here was, through their laborious efforts, had been found to be the most qualified species of the herbs for many other maladies and plagues in human race in the 21st century. Now you probably would like to know, well, what were they? Okay, I'm going to name some. How about malaria? How about cancer? Diabetes, MS, arthritis, lupus, bacteria, viruses, fungus, it's almost named everything, hasn't it? Candida. And it is also here they are that I just gave you. Okay? Benefits for various diseases. And here are some of them and I named a couple others. And we're going to talk about this because these are important things that are happening right now in the United States and around the world. When you take artemisium, it is not hard to take. It is very easy to take. But you know, in America, we haven't discovered it. You've heard a slow boat to China. Well, we've been pretty slow in America to find this plant. But we are learning about it little by little. And one of the benefits that really is very good is that it is micro, um, micro, um, Let's see. Micro products, oh, properties, excuse me, anti micro pro properties. And it helps the immune system. And one of the ways that it continues to help the immune system, it, it is a fast oxygenator in the, in the blood. It goes down to the very cell. And that is what helps our immune system, is having this. It, it really builds the oxygen really quick. Now how many of you have heard of asthma, hay fevers, and things of this sort, right? Maybe you've dealt with them yourself. Well, actually, this has been in the, in the immune system in here that you needed. The, the actual thing that happens is, is that it gets inflamed. And when it does become inflamed inside, 
your bronchial area, you can't breathe. And you need to get that inflammation out. And that's what this does. It literally helps people with that. Let's see. Maybe there's something else it also does. Oh, people that have maybe things like um, digestive problems. Anybody have digestive problems here? It helps in digestion. It really is a help in digestion when you take this. I don't know what exactly it does for your stomach, but it improves the digestive enzymes. They help them to digest your food. Okay, next, skin. Ah, dry skin, right? How many you hear? Oh, my skin is so dry. Well, Artemis oil is very good. You can rub it on your skin and it really makes your skin feel good. Okay? Let's see. Oh, yes, there's something else. It is very good for fevers. It will take down a fever as quick as you're, as you can think about how fast it can be. It is quick. It works amazingly quick on taking down fevers. That's not alone what it does. It, it fights the immune, you know, the um, um, inflation, in, inflammatory places in your body. Let's say you have a boil or something that has gotten infected. You put this right on it and it will mm -hmm. clear it up. Okay. It takes away headaches. How many struggle with headaches today? because of something that's going on, well, it will help with the headaches and take that away. Bleeding, it also will help in bleeding. Now, there is other things that are very important. In diabetics, you have a very hard time keeping a blood sugar level. And when the blood sugar level is not right, diabetes is extremely hard to control. And so, automisin will balance your blood system. It will balance it. It has been proven fact that it will balance the blood system. Okay. That's what we do, right? Yes. Yeah. Hey, well, there's something else here. Let me think here. Oh, yeah, well, that's good to come. What well, does it is balance what? It balances blood the blood sugar. Oh, blood sugar. Yes. We're all familiar with this, aren't we? I'm going to tell you a little story about this. In Madagascar, when everybody was having COVID, the president, Ruchali, of Madagascar made drinks in bottles and gave it to the people. Madagascar gave it to the people. And those that had it were cured. They were cured. I'm not saying the United States. I am saying in Madagascar that COVID-19 was cured using animism, artemisin. That that is that's really something, isn't it? And how they put them in, in bottles, you know, you drink pop in bottles, they drink artemisin in bottles. Maybe we ought to do that. That might be kind of good, wouldn't it? Okay, now you're probably wondering, well, how do you take this? Okay, I just put a, 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 a bottle over here, Doctor's Best, and in that Doctor's Best bottle, uh, there is a phone number I'm hoping you're taking down, because this is one of the best artemisins in a capsule that you can get from Doctor's Best. And it has a phone number? Yes, it and is on the back. In fact, I can give it to you when you're finished looking at okay, the bottle. Okay. okay. His name is Dr. What? Dr. Best. Best? Dr. Best. Doctor's Best brand. B-E-S-T, Best, Doctor's oh, Best. Do oh, Doctor's Best. Uh-huh. They're online, and you can order it from them. And second of all, I would like to tell you how to take it. You can take two to four capsules of this in the morning and in the evening. Now you say, well, I may not want to make capsules, so how would you like to make it in the tea form? You can take the leaves 
and you can take one teaspoon of the leaves and put it in one cup of water, boiling water, and you can steep it for 10 to 15 minutes. And when you steep it for 10 to 15 minutes, you will have a nice artemisin tea. And you can strain it and you can drink it. You can have these three times a day if you want, morning, evening, and noon. Now, one more thing about it is it that when you take a pharmaceutical product, it is best not to take artemisin with it. Artemisin stands by itself. It, it has the properties of almost any kind of health that you might need. It's very beneficial. Okay, then after that, I told you about the oil form. Okay, and you can get the leaves and you can get the seeds and they are all on those papers that I gave you where to look them up and get the seeds. And this is out of my own garden and this is out of my own garden. I grew this last year. And so this, this paper will tell us where to order the seeds, right? No, that paper will, yes. Okay. It will tell you where to get seeds. I'm sorry, a friend of mine, I asked if they had seeds. And they, they said, no, I don't have any. And I said, oh, dear, that's a shame. But you can order them. And you can even get this, which is the plain dried leaves. And you can use them. Yes. And it's, it's very beneficial for you, and I'd like to um, end with this. When you take Artemisian, you should take it only about five days and leave off two days. Five days take it and two days off. Okay, did you all get that? Good. And then for how many rotations of that till you're not feeling And two, you're sick. better. Okay. Yeah. I'd like to give you a quick story about my husband. He got COVID and almost died. Huh? And you can take it off. Except this. He had COVID and almost died. And I think they didn't have it. Yeah, we did the back. It went through. Did you? Yes, thank you very much. And I nursed him to health. He wanted, he would not go into the hospital. Uh, oh. Being a medical missionary, I had to take care of my husband, and I learned a lot of things. Um, I did learn that hydrotherapy was the very best thing I could do for him. Very best. But internally, Artemisin helped him to breathe better every day. It took his fevers down, and it helped him to get stronger. So Artemisin was very, very good at that time for what he needed. Now real quickly, I'm trying an experiment. And this is not documented, but it is giving hope for those that have eye problems. I have a friend of mine, and real quickly she decided that she was going to try the Artemis and she found out about cataracts and how they cloud. I myself are taking Artemis right now in my eyes. Normally, I wear glasses that are on top of my head, okay? Little by little, and I've only taken this, what, three days? And my vision is little by little, I can tell, getting better. I take it three days. Uh, let's see, I take it three times a day, and I'll be taking it for four weeks. My friend took it, tried it out, and I'll tell you how to make it real quick in just a minute. She went in to go get her license. When she went in, she wore glasses for many years. She saw everything on the chart, taking autumnus and then putting just one drop three times. Am I in your way? It's okay three times, and each time that she did it, she noticed that she was getting better. Three times a day? For three times for four weeks. Four weeks, one drop. Yes, and one drop. And you take the leaves, put it in cold water, just like I said, one teaspoon, but you use distilled water, distilled water, one cup distilled water cold, and you put one teaspoon of the leaves in that cold, Okay, you leave it out for 24 hours, you put it in your refrigerator, 
and you keep it cold for another day. Then you strain it through the coffee filters. And after you've strained it through the coffee filters, you put it in a bottle with a little squeezer and you go to work on your eyes. Okay. And I also one teaspoon to a cup of distilled water. Right. And then you let it set for 24 hours. Yes. Uh, and then, and then put, put it in the refrigerator for another, for another day. Yes. And then you strain it really well and you use it. And so far I can say it it has just a speck of a little burn and then all of a sudden it's gone. And you you can actually wake up in the morning and you're going like this getting stuff away from your eyes. Okay. Wow. Now I don't I know have how them. I haven't got that. Yeah. If you're diabetic if you're diabetic it may not work, oh, but yeah. it might work. But anyway, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome.